Again, thank you so much for joining us right here on Idaho Today. The World Health Organization estimates lower back pain affects more than 620 million people around the world every single year. That's why St. Alphonsus Comprehensive Pain and Spine treat the whole person, not just their pain. They help patients take an active role in controlling their pain beyond the use of drugs, and they focus on achieving the best possible outcomes. Dr. James Williams joined us in studio to explain further. Dr. Williams, I think all too often many of us may have pushed it too hard. Maybe we've gardened or maybe we did a little athletic endeavor that may be beyond what we should be doing. Uh, and we've woken up with a sore back. But how do we know when something's simply a sore back or perhaps it's something a little more than just a simple strain? When do we seek that help from a doctor? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. and sometimes a difficult question even for us to answer as, mm -hmm. as physicians. But if we're talking about something more serious like compression fractures, right? I, I look at the patient history. So female sex over the age of 70, history of osteoporosis, mm -hmm. previous history of compression fractures, those are all things that put you at a higher risk for, for having new or uh, additional fractures. Um, beyond that though, right, it, a lot of it depends on the on the history or the story, right? So oftentimes there's an inciting event, you, like you said, you're out in the garden, you tripped over something, ground level fall, usually pretty low trauma, but pretty immediate severe pain, or you're maybe lifting that bag of soil, something, something a little bit too heavy, and you mm -hmm. hear or feel a crack or pop. So mm. oftentimes there's a, a pretty good convincing story, but not always. Sometimes okay. they're more, you know, insidious. They can be with coughing or rolling over in bed. So again, why it can be why it can be challenging. But the short answer to your question, if the pain's really uncontrollable, so not responding to conservative things like resting, pain medications, ice heat, the things any mm -hmm. of us would probably try first, or if the pain is really impairing your function, right? Mm -hmm. So pain with or disturbing your sleep, pain getting up, moving, twisting, bending, all the things you should be doing with normal life, those are probably the the, the key things that should steer you to, to the doctor's office to get some additional evaluation and workup. Okay, and then what are the symptoms though of a compression fracture itself? Yeah, great, great question. Yeah. So most commonly, you know, there's usually what we call point tenderness. So if, okay. that, if that fractures at say the lumbar two or L2 level, uh, you know, usually they're pretty tender to that spot. Other things, inability to lie flat. So if patients oh. do get advanced imaging okay. or they say, gosh, I can't lie in my bed, it's just uncomfortable to do that. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good clue. Or when patients get jostled, as I say. So mm -hmm. I'll actually tap on them in the exam room. But if patients say, when I hit a speed bump or something like that, um, or again, pain that interferes with sleep at nighttime. Those okay. are all a little bit more specific maybe for, for compression fractures. Okay, and what can cause a compression fracture? Are there specific type of movements or events? Yeah, like or I said, it, it, yeah, it can be. Sometimes they're incidental findings, meaning they just happen to show up on x-rays and you never oh, wow. knew you had one. Um, okay. But sometimes, like I said, there is a convincing story, like I said, a fall or a bending, twisting, something like that. So it can be kind of kind of across the board, but usually, you know, talk about osteoporotic fractures, usually okay. just weak bones is, is the, main, the main risk factor. All right, and so then I'd imagine that's a risk that then probably increases with age, right? Correct, yeah, age, okay. degree of osteoporosis, again, previous fractures, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, and how do you treat a compression fracture? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. So there's kind of two major ways to do it. There's conservative care, right? So kind of like we talked about, bed rest, pain medications, plus or minus bracing. Mm -hmm. But there's really not great evidence that that really reduces pain scores, and it's definitely not gonna fix the fracture. Okay. So that's how patients start off with, is conservative care. But if you're, and if you're truly getting better with conservative care, right, you're actually improving your mobilizing, you're moving, you're getting back to where you were before the fracture, that's appropriate. The reason I'm here today and what I see unfortunately is people continue to get that level of care when they really need something else, meaning they're not mobilizing, they're not getting up and moving. Um, so the alternative or the additional treatment is kyphoplasty. Okay. Uh, we're actually we go in and fix the fracture, fix the problem. Uh, and I will say people who get kyphoplasty actually do a lot better, have less complications, less mortality in, in big population studies. Okay, so kyphoplasty, mm -hmm. so that is the procedure, if you will, of fixing uh, those types of fractures? Exactly, that's exactly okay. in, in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. And what are the benefits of this type of procedure, yeah. though? That's a new word for me, yeah. hypoplasty. <laughs> new for okay. a lot of people, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's really it's really the same the same idea as fixing any other bone, right? If okay. you fractured your arm or your leg, right, yeah. it'd be broken like this, right? We would want to reduce the fracture and then you know, cast it so it can heal appropriately. Same principles, except we just have to go about it a little differently. We minimally invasively access the spine, usually under sedation, numbing agent, anesthesia. We go in, we actually reduce the fracture with either a balloon or an implantable device. And then we actually put bone cement in a very safe and controlled manner to actually fix fix the fracture and fix the pain. So yeah, like I said, people have immediate, more or less immediate resolution of pain. So again, it's a very, truly a life-saving therapy, a very gratifying procedure, immediate Absolutely. benefits. Um, and the other reason we do it is for the anatomy reasons. So like you, like we were talking about, if you have one fracture, 
can become two, become three, if we kind of prevent that kyphosis or that bad posture from the fracture, mm -hmm. actually reduces problems in the future. And I can only imagine too, probably improves mobility Absolutely. and then just quality yep. of life, which we all know staying in motion is incredibly yep. important, especially you, as you age. You hit the nail on the head, right? Yeah. That's, that, you know, we're doing it for pain control, we're doing it for anatomic restoration, but the reason we, we I discuss and offer kyphoplasty is exactly that. Because when patients aren't mobilizing, aren't moving, that's when you run into complications. And then that could lead to other health issues, exactly. right? Yeah, that's, like that's heart why, issues, yep. diabetes, because you're not Ex moving. And exactly right, yep. The list goes on. Yep. <laughs> okay, so if people are interested mm -hmm. in this, you know, potential solution to yeah. improve the quality of their life yeah. and keep moving, uh, what do they do? Yeah, uh, so I'd encourage, uh, you know, patients, people watching to go to stalfonsus.org and just uh, Google kyphoplasty and hopefully uh, that's spelled out on the screen because it's a, it's a new word for all of us. But Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is. I, I've expanded my vocabulary and Excellent. my knowledge yeah. uh, about back pain. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Williams. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely.